free sounds of the ground. Please sit with your back straight and calm your mind. Now, repeat after me. I now take refuge in the Buddha. I now take refuge in the Dhamma. I now take refuge in the Sangha. For the second time, I take refuge in the Buddha. For the second time, I take refuge in the Dhamma. For the second time, I take refuge in the Sangha. For the third time, I take refuge in the Buddha. For the third time, I take refuge in the Dhamma. For the third time, I take refuge in the Sangha. Uh, five precepts. Five precepts. Please clear your mind and pay close attention, then repeat after me. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from killing or harming living beings on purpose. I undertake to, to keep the precept to abstain from taking what is not given. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from wrong sexual activity. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from telling lies and harsh speech. I undertake to keep the precept to abstain from taking drugs and alcohol. I undertake to be loving and kind to myself and all living beings. So let us read these five things together. I am subject to old age. I am not exempt from old age. I am subject to illness. I am not exempt from illness. I am subject to death. I am not exempt from death. I will be separated from everyone and everything dear and agreeable to me. I am the owner of my karma, the heir of my karma. I have karma as my origin, karma as my relative, karma as my resort. I will be the heir of whatever karma, good or bad, that I do. Now you have taken the three refuges, the five precepts, and the five recollections. This leads to happiness and peace. Please turn to the other side. And <clears throat> now let us read the verses of the Dhammapada together. Mind is the forerunner of all evil states. Mind is chief. Mind made are they. If one speaks or acts with an unwholesome mind, because of that, Suffering follows one, even as the wheel follows the hoop of the draft ox. Mind is the forerunner of all good states. Mind is cheap. Mind made are they. If one speaks or acts with a pure mind, because of that, happiness follows one, even as one's shadow that never leaves. He abused me, he beat me, he defeated me, he robbed me. In those who harbor such thoughts, hatred is not at peace. He abused me, he beat me, he defeated me, he robbed me. In those who do not harbor such thoughts, hatred is appeased. Hatred is never overcome by hatred in this world. Hatred is only overcome by love. This is an eternal law. In the unessential, we imagine the essential. In the essential, we see the unessential. 
Anyone who entertains such wrong thoughts never will realize the truth. What is essential we regard as essential. What is unessential we regard as unessential. Anyone who entertains such right thoughts will realize the truth. Here one develops a mind that rejoices now, and in the future one rejoices. In both states the well-doer rejoices. One who rejoices a lot will be able to see the purity of their own deeds, speech, and thoughts. When one is happy now, they will be happy in the future. In both states the well-doer is happy. Thinking I have done good in the past, one becomes happy and will easily experience a blissful state of mind. Though a person recites sacred texts but doesn't act accordingly, that heedless person is like a cowherd who counts others' cows. They have no share in the fruits of the holy life. Though a person recites the sacred texts very little but acts in accordance with the teaching, they give up lust, hatred, and delusion. They truly know what is good, and this leads to a mind that is free from suffering. They cling to nothing here and in the future. In this way, one shares the fruits of the holy life. Okay, we can put that aside. And we will close our eyes and begin our meditation. Bring your body to a resting position. As you hear the next sound of the gong, you may transcend your worries. Concerns for the future, anxiety, and fears. Instead, choose courage, fearlessness, peace, and calm abiding. With the next sound of the gong as it disappears, you may come to your body, your home, and begin paying attention to you're inhaling and exhaling. Take a deep breath in, bringing, bring your shoulders all the way up. And as you breathe out, you may drop your shoulders. Please do so a couple of times. Breathe in, bring your shoulders all the way up. And breathe out. Dropping your shoulders. One more time. Let us quickly scan the body. Bringing a gentle smile to your face, bright and shining. Now, to also paying attention to the forehead and going upward to the crown of your head and the back of your head, your ears, your neck muscles in your eyes and all tension and tightness anywhere gone. Now pay attention to the upper back, mid back and lower back.
If you have to adjust your posture any time during this meditation or move to a wall, feel free to do so. There is no need to break your practice because of your posture. When you change your posture, you will pay attention to changing your posture and applying mindfulness to that one activity you do whenever you do it. And applying by applying mindfulness, you have uninterrupted meditation. With that uninterruptedness, you come back to whatever you have been doing before. Continuously applying mindfulness is key in developing stillness in our minds. Now pay attention to your neck, shoulders. Notice their movements alongside your breath. your arms and elbows, also your palms and fingers. Noticing also their resting positions. Not leaning forward or backward, just gently positioned. your abdomen, chest, pelvic area, the sitting bones, all per perfectly aligned, no rushing to go anywhere, just following the instructions. Notice also the knees and their positioning. How else you can comfort <clears throat> these lower parts of your body. Giving enough air and space and agility as well as making sure there is comfort, blood circulation. And if there is any nerve blockage impingement, you may change your posture to give comfort to the body <clears throat> by doing so. <clears throat> You can come back unbothered, undistracted to whatever you have been doing before in your meditation. Now pay attention to your shin bones, the long bones between your knees and your ankles. Having relaxed them, you go to the soles of your feet, and having relaxed them, you go to the toes. And now you are getting deeply rooted to the ground beneath. Looking for stability, stamina, courage, perseverance, joy, euphoric, stillness and balance, equanimity. All these things that nurture our roots. One more time, 
to move away from agitations if they are persistent. Please tell yourself that you will change your posture mindfully at any time. You will cough. You will do whatever it takes to give a calm and comfortable abiding to your body. Imagine yourself being a tree shedding all old leaves and being unshaken by the wind of shame and guilt, unshaken by eight worldly conditions, loss and gain, fame and defame, insults, and praise. Happiness and suffering. The Buddha never said life is suffering. He said there is suffering in life. There is also happiness and the highest happiness that we can achieve for comfortable abiding <clears throat> harmonious perspective arriving at peace here and now while we are living our rare precious lives. Now you may pause for a moment to see what is present in your awareness. Things come and go as you pause and observe. Now, since your eyes are closed, there is no seeing. Since your ears are not active, you barely hear much to pay attention to. And nose, tongue, skin, these are inactive. So seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, physical sensations, as well as what your mind is thinking, these are all subdued. They go far away or become inactive. Brain and our nervous system begins to cool down. But mindfulness, calmness, tranquility, they all begin to kick in. Notice the natural breath and the area where you feel the breath and its presence. It's 
spiritually across your upper body. Notice incoming and outgoing breath. Naturally our body. Breathing in and breathing out. Some parts of our body become very, very still, not moving. See if you are able to find the rhythm of your breath as you keep your body upright and focused on in-breath and the out-breath. Sustaining your awareness continuously. As this breath is happening now, not in the past, not in the future. Everything else that may take your attention only stays with those things temporarily and you release those things from your attention. Come back to your breath. Notice without you doing anything, your hands have calmed down. Skin, any brokenness begins to cool down and heal. And you continuously apply awareness to your inhaling and exhaling. Mindfully, you breathe in. Mindfully, you breathe out. We may stop trying to look at our breath, but instead feel it as we feel it. And you may now narrow your focus just to the starting point of your breath, to the ending point of your breath. Inhaling and exhaling.
Notice long and short nature of some of your in breath and some of your out breaths. See how mindful you can be and allow everything else to disappear into the space. Whenever you feel distracted, recognize it, release it, return to your breath, and repeat. This happens in seconds. Make your breath a delightful experience. That means there's things for, my, for your mind to be with. Notice how, as you stay focused with your breath, how the mind also follows the rhythmic nature of the body's breathing experience expansion of the mind into this space. It only takes less energy to notice <clears throat> this expansion. The mind now, without any effort, wants to come back to the home that is your in breath and out breath. <clears throat> less and less busy there.
when the mind does stand, everything else is in balance, stays in its own territory, protected, guarded, restrained, and there is meditation energy arising. There is a mind now going deeper inwardly, settling in, and the mind does not see any obstacle. Obstacles of anger disappeared, wanting things disappear, frustration does not build up. Mind sees calmness, tranquility, peaceful abiding, a natural state of being. With this beginner's mind, we can unlearn, undo, and rewire our brain to see positively, see through the eyes of tranquility, healing, and lots and lots of deep insight. When the mind loses the ch chains tied to it, tied to the eyes, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind is free. inwardly settled, stays in a pleasant abiding here and now, aware of what is arising, aware of what is disappearing, not clinging to any state, any encounter, any experience. Things arise in their natural state without a story and then they disappear without you having to do anything. This beginner's mind that we arrived at is a blessing. It brings happiness. The tamed mind brings happiness, the Buddha said. That means untamed mind brings unsatisfactoriness, unhappiness. Instead of wondering, mind stays present with just this breath Calming this breath even more. Noticing however subtle your breath becomes. Staying pleasantly taken by its mystery, you remain there.
completely surrendering to this breath and letting go. Let go of colors, patterns, visualizations as well, so the mind can begin to go deeper and deeper into its own stillness. Whatever that arises and tries to take the attention of your mind will not be permanent. This too shall pass.
Prepare to come out of your meditation, the third sound of the gong. You may now stretch, feel your body again. So that was about forty minutes. Of meditation. How was it? <laughs> it helps me to guide. Also, it helps. It apparently helps me as well to go deeper as a guide. Although sometimes some meditating monks say, they prefer to just not guide and sit. So in the reading, do you see anything that is interesting, any word that you like to revisit? <clears throat> any uh, specific place that you were curious of? When we go to St. Louis, we read this every day at uh, 5.30, about 6 in the morning before we meditate uh, as a group during the 10 days of a retreat. So I'm trying to adapt it here on some days when there is a group present. <laughs> These are famous verses of Dhammapada. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, this is Asare Sar Masino, Sare Cha Sar Dasino. Te saran nadigachanti samma sankap no asare sar mati te micha sankap gochara. So, this is the wrong kind of thinking. In the unessential, we imagine the essential. <clears throat> In the essential, we see the unessential, we just ignore meditation, we ignore. Uh, wholesome thoughts, the opportunity to cultivate them. Uh, but we spend so much time watching TV, um, whatever, that takes a lot of space of our mind. So these are <clears throat> wrong thoughts, habits that we develop and that we we are blocking the view um, for the truth to be revealed to us because we are fooled by the lies that the mind continuously brings to us. With those lies that the mind constructs, we love spending so much time. And sometimes we spend the, the whole life just getting busy with just anything the mind tells us to do. <clears throat> but today in this meditation, we 
were able to uh, gradually bring it to restrain the mind. And all we had to do was to just <clears throat> take some effort to notice how just by closing our eyes, we, we, we don't stay distracted by what we see. And we can also naturally close our ears, not physically, but mentally. And all else also falls into a place. So the brain does not get so busy having to respond to everything. <laughs> Usually we respond to everything, right? Now, in meditation, we, we realize we don't have to respond to everything. And this <clears throat> Dhammapada Lata, the verse, is touching that. And the opposite is what is essential, we regard as essential. What is wholesome, what is good, we take it for what it is. What is unessential, especially the, the mind creating all the lives. A simple example would be that <clears throat> uh, you go under tree and you imagine oh, something is going to fall from this tree and then suddenly panic arises in your heart. And it all is a false thought that arose and you believed it and the body didn't know how to react. And it just reacted that way. And this happens a lot to us. It's just a simple example, right? And same way you look at a person and we judge them. <laughs> and over the years of knowing them, we realize oh, how many good qualities that this person had. In the beginning, the mind couldn't tell, but with experience, it was able to tell that this, the person is super nice individual. But somehow we just couldn't see it. Um, but what number 12 is looking at is um, what is unessential. Usually uh, frustration is unessential, hatred, jealousy, lack of uh, rejoicing in uh, what other people have and what they have achieved. So, we spend time getting worked up with things that, you know, that is not necessary. Also watching news sometimes, <laughs> continuous news story that our computer tries to pop up when we are all trying to focus on um, homework, right? The computer is so smart to just distract us with something. <laughs> And it's an unessential completely. We weren't even asking for it. And they try to build the structure in such a way that they can keep us distracted <laughs> with nice colors, nice images, nice something. Uh, anyone who entertains such, such right thoughts will re realize the truth. These are very strong, powerful wisdom statements. Uh, <clears throat> so right thoughts is here just something simple as thought to meditate thought to pause thought to tame the mind thought to be mindful with in breath and the out breath thoughts of just letting go also thoughts of not owning everything that we feel <laughs> sometimes <clears throat> we say I feel fear I feel panic I feel nervous, I feel this and that. All these are just visitors. They come, they go. All we have to do is to just let them be. They all have their own ways of coming, their own ways of going. We had nothing to do with them. Because of our experiences and lack of knowing, we just think that it's my fear. It's my anxiety. It's you know, I should do something about it. 
and trying to do is our nature. <laughs> we never learn to be. We are beings. We are not doings. Right? We want to do something about things. This gets us more um, frustrated. Uh, there's much more, I think, uh, perseverance. We, we, grow, we grow through what we go through. We never give up. We just grow through. Failures and all of those are just blessings in life. Give time, give time. No need to say, I can't do it. It's just a thought that that thought also disappears. This is when, you know, growing up, this is when you, you tell yourself, oh, the thought came to my mind that I can't do it. But I will think like that until I actually do it. This is what we need to see. And then everybody will say, oh yeah, she can do it. He can do it. <laughs> the world is like that. It just works in our favor when we don't give up. This is how we train our mind. You know, all these really successful people, they never gave up. They did not surrender to the lies of others and lies of the mind's constructs. Mind always makes, oh, this is impossible, I can't do it, kind of mind. Very unnecessary. This is fear-driven, anxiety-driven. Um, but we can always conquer that. The Buddha, he never gave up. He failed and failed and failed and failed and he also noticed that he can try this other technique, other technique, and finally realized what is actually, what was there to be realized. Coming at truth and abandoning the lies that his mind had made throughout the cycle of birth and death, and that he called ignorance. He has been ignoring the truth. You all have done that. And slowly we can arrive at truth. Anyway, any more questions? Anything else? I can sense um, that <clears throat> we do have that wanting to know a little bit getting informed about what is happening in our neighborhood, in our, it's, it's like situational awareness, also part of it, like we want to be vigilant and be alert if there was something bad going on in the area. Um, aside from that, as a mother, you also want to be aware of what is happening in my town, in my country. That also is part of it, continuously wanting to know. But um, what uh, happened to some <clears throat> mothers also is that when something has happened to somebody else's daughter and we get so overworked up <clears throat> with that, then we need to observe and pause and see this is not happening to me. <laughs> like you said, trying to not own it is important. Because I've seen that happening to some Sri Lankan mothers in Sri Lanka when huge news about something happening to a daughter of somebody else happening. 
then they get obsessed over did my daughter go to school is, is she safe there all of that happens in her mind and she then forgets to cook she forgets to clean she forgets to do everything else i mean i'm just being so naive here just trying to describe what could happen but what i was going to go to is that we are also overwhelmed with too much information this we call an infodemic not a pandemic and we our bodies don't know how to deal with that therefore you know just knowing when to stop when to unplug this is unnecessary and i can let go of this i have my meditation skills sharpened enough to notice to not own notice when to let go notice how unhealthy this could be if i allow it to go in that direction <clears throat> again non self health it isn't we do see things but it's not ours the simplest example that the buddha gave to visaka one of the patrons well the patrons is that she was uh, actually experiencing a loss in her own family a granddaughter had died and she was feeling this intense grief and then her relatives told her to go into that river it has cold water because of cold water you will not feel any any grief in your body but as soon as she come out of the water she feels the body so she realizes it's only external treatment that doesn't help she was still feeling intense grief because of all the memories she had with this grandchild she went to the buddha <clears throat> the buddha as you know how many people die in this town it's a big town in india thousands and do you feel sad about that she said no and the answer was there it's because she did not own those deaths those those people who died were not her people she did not have any memory associated with them the same day things die everywhere <laughs> like leaves falling things arise and pass away we don't need to notice them as ours death is always present with thoughts with experiences with actual death also happen news also come and die people get so interested about things but you know i as a monk my role is to not get worked up with things i notice that all the time so i try not to contribute to gossip i try to practice right speech i try to stay you know even when people ask do you know anything about this i reflect on how gossip dies when it lands in a wise person's ear i try to stick with those things <laughs> so that it helps me to also see my practice in those things so i think for a mother uh, she can do the same my role as a mother is to make sure that my daughters are healthy my family is healthy my parents are healthy so all these roles that we play teach us you know what is essential and what is enough and then cut down anything else but i do i know you were not thinking um about being a mother necessarily when you asked that when you brought that up but i was just going there um just to clarify a little bit deeper of how things can play in our mind anyway we have gone beyond our time <laughs> let us uh, maybe bring our palms together and share merits especially thinking of Bhante Samita's father who passed away last Thursday and wishing him happy rebirth. May the suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck 
fearless be. May the great ancient or brief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Bhavagupadaya vichi hetta to etantare satta kayo prapanna rupi ya rupi cha sanya sanjino dukha kamunchantu pusantu nibbuting. Idam me punyang asavakhya vaham hotu sabha dukha pamunchatu vinina punya kamme na mami bala samagamo. Satang samagamo hotu yava nibbana patiya. May all good things happen to you. May you be deeply well. May there is physical and mental healing in every way in your lives. May you lo live long, happily, achieving your good purposes. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.